This lesson deals with basic properties in pairs. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 9, starting on page 6. Our first property is that of linearity. Given a times f1 of t plus b times f2 of t, I want to show that the Laplace transform of that is equal to a times f1 of s plus b times f2 of s. Now, why would that be true? Let's take the Laplace transform of that summation of two time functions, that's just our f of t, and apply our definition of the Laplace transform. So the integral from 0 minus to infinity of our function f of t multiplied by e to the minus st dt. Now the integral of the sum is the sum of the integral, so let's just take the first term here and integrate that. But a is not a function of time, so I'll bring that in front. So I've got the integral from 0 minus to infinity of f1 of t times e to the minus st dt. And likewise for the second term here, b is not a function of time, just a scalar. Integral from 0 minus to infinity of f2 of t times e to the minus st dt. But this is our definition of f1 of s, and this is our definition of f2 of s. So we're multiplying those by scalars. And of course, what this implies from our uniqueness property from the last video is that the inverse Laplace transform of this would be a times f1 of t plus b times f2 of t. That's just one special case here. That's when b is equal to 0. So if we took a Laplace transform of a constant k times f of t, that's equal to k times f of s. And likewise, from our uniqueness property, the inverse Laplace transform of k times f of s would be k times f of t. These are the properties that we had talked about in ECE 201 for linearity. Let's look at another example. So let's take the Laplace transform of a times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus alpha t times u of t, and show that that's equal to a times alpha divided by s times the quantity s plus alpha. What I got here really is a summation of two terms. So I can use my linearity property from the last page. And so the Laplace transform of this quantity times u of t would just be the Laplace transform of a times u of t, and then minus a times e to the minus alpha t times u of t. We've already shown that the Laplace transform of u of t is 1 over s, and we've shown that the Laplace transform of e to the minus alpha t times u of t is equal to 1 over s plus alpha. And here we just got scalars of a times each of these quantities. Find a common denominator, a multiplying both, and then I could have s and s plus alpha, multiply this by s plus alpha, and then multiply this by s and subtract the value, s, these cancel. I'm left with a times alpha divided by s times the quantity s plus alpha. Let's do another one. Let's show that the Laplace transform of a times the sine of beta t u of t is equal to a beta over s squared plus beta squared. Let's go back to chapter 8 and use Euler's identity, where we had e to the j beta t was defined to be cosine of beta t plus j times the sine of beta t. And then if we have the conjugate of that with a minus j here, it's going to have a minus j over here. So the difference of these two, the first minus the second, the term cosine beta t would drop out, and we would get j times sine of beta t minus a minus j sine of beta t. So just a plus j2 sine of beta t. So we could write our function f of t as a times the sine of beta t, so a times the quantity here, e to the j beta t minus e to the minus j beta t divided by 2j. Again, we can express this as a sum of terms. So I've got the first term, which is a over 2j times e to the j beta t, and then minus a over 2j times e to the minus j beta t. The Laplace transform of this function would just be the Laplace transform of each of the pieces from our linearity property. These two terms are not a function of t. You can pull those out. So we've got the Laplace transform of e to the j beta t. We've already shown in, in example 9.2 that the Laplace transform of e to the alpha t is equal to 1 over s minus alpha, and this alpha in this case is j beta, and then my second term is minus a over 2j, and then the Laplace transform of this is going to be 1 over s plus j beta. Let's find a common denominator. We've got a scalar up front that's the same, so a over 2j. And we'll take this times this to form our common denominator. So we've got to multiply this times this, that's this term, and I'll subtract this quantity here, s minus j beta. I get some terms to cancel the s and the minus s, and I have j beta and a minus a minus j beta, so I've got two of those. But j here, so that cancels with that. So I just have a times beta in the numerator, and then multiply this out. I get s squared, then I have s times minus j beta, and here I've got the same quantity with the opposite sign, so they cancel. And then I get a beta squared, a j squared, and another minus one. So it becomes just a plus beta squared. So the Laplace transform of a times sine of beta t is equal to a times beta over s squared plus beta squared. Let's next take a look at what's called the integration property. The Laplace transform of the integral of f of x dx from 0 to t is equal to f of s over s. Now what this is saying is that the time domain integration of a waveform f of t is accomplished in the s domain by dividing its transform f of s by s. Now why would this be true? 
Let's apply again the definition of the Laplace transform to our function. So we'll take the integral from 0 minus to infinity of the integral of f of x dx from 0 to t and multiply that by e to the minus st dt. Now to do the integration here, I'm going to use a technique from calculus called integration by parts. Which you may recall is that the integral from a to b of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du, evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. In this example, let's let u equal this integral of f of x dx from 0 to t, and let's let dv equal this term, e to the minus st dt. Differentiate both sides of the equation here with respect to t, and we'll just simply get f of t. So we can say that du is equal to f of t times dt, and over here if we integrate both sides, then the integral of 1 dv is just v, and the integral of e to the minus st dt is equal to minus 1 over s e to the minus st. I can substitute these back into the equation, uv minus the integral of v du. Here's my value of u, here's my value of v, and then here's the integral of v, which is equal to this quantity right here, times du, which was equal to this. Here, our integration limits are going to go from 0 minus to infinity for both of these. Now, this function over here, when we, we plug in t equals 0, is going to be the integral from 0 to 0, so that's going to be equal to 0. And then the integral for infinity of this term is going to be equal to 0, because we have e to the minus infinity. So the evaluation of these two terms at infinity and at zero gives me one or the other term equal to zero. So I'm just left with this term right over here. Minus signs cancel. S is not a function of time, and so I'm left with the integral from zero minus to infinity of f of t times e to the minus st dt, but this is our definition of f of s divided by s. And so we can again summarize the integration property in that it states that the time domain integration of a waveform f of t is accomplished in the s domain by dividing the Laplace transform f of s by s. Let's look at another function from chapter 5. This is called the ramp function, and it's defined as the integral from minus infinity to t of the step function u of x dx. Our step function is 0 for t less than 0, so the integral from minus infinity to 0 minus is going to be equal to 0, and then we're just left with the integral from 0 minus to t of our step function. And that's just going to be the integral of 1 dx, value at the upper limit minus the lower limit would just be equal to t. We're going to multiply this by u of t, so our function is 0 for t less than 0, and it's simply increasing with a constant slope of 1. In our next example, let's show that the Laplace transform of the ramp function is 1 over s squared. The Laplace transform of this definition, again from 0 to t of our step function u of x dx, but then from our integration property we had on the last page, this is equal to 1 over s, the Laplace transform of u of t. And the Laplace transform of u of t is just simply 1 over s, and then multiplying by that 1 over s again, we get 1 over s squared. And so these are some of the basic properties of Laplace transform and Laplace transform pairs.